Five, four, three, two, one. The truth shall set you free. 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 Hey man, say man, y'all know what it is, man. Another episode of the Ugly Truth. But on this episode of the Ugly Truth, we're gonna deep dive. We're gonna do deep dive dive, which means it's gonna be the deepest indoor dive that we have seen in a long time in the Christian music, rap game, gospel game, whichever way y'all wanna profess, cut, slice, and dice. We're gonna get into a real episode tonight, man. That's finna be real intriguing to myself. I'm finna learn some things because I don't know everything about it. But I know I got a, 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 a real pioneer in here. I got somebody who helped create a game where they were talked about and said that they shouldn't be able to do this. They shouldn't be able to rap about Christian music. It's of the devil, which was able to pull millions on top of millions in and change their lives, which able to supplement. You can't shut a corner store down and don't have things that the corner store have. So with these these people when i say these people i mean these group of men were able to do was a phenomenal thing to be able to help substitute to get people to christ we just gonna keep it as what it was and what it is you dig what i'm saying when somebody get off a of heroin they don't go straight off a of heroin all the time everybody don't have that strength they go to uh methadone or whatever the the, the terminology i know my uncle was on it when he go to the clinic you got to take something to help you you understand me <clears throat> so we finna deep dive into a great conversation tonight man we gonna hit on a whole lot of points somebody who i know personally changed that industry single-handedly you dig what i'm saying uh a man right now who has a documentary on the way a man who is a father a man who is in multiple industries but the industry that i know him for as the most of it all is being one who was able to pioneer a game and not just use the word pioneer but touch hearts of millions and stay humble with it so without further ado let me introduce to y'all my man the one and only antonio oh yeah we up in here all the way up in here you know it. yes sir my dog king ed what's really popping bro listen Man, love you, bro. Love you. Love Listen, you. man. I got my man Antonio, aka Tony Coates, in the building, man. And we finna go what I call deep dive to buy, man. My man had a lot going on since the last episode. I've been able to chop it up with him, man. We finna really deep dive into some things. We finna respond to some things. We finna talk about what he got on the table, how things been going, how social media been popping, how people been saying things about him. He gonna respond and just let folks know what the real true story is, man. That's what we do. You know why? Because it's called The Ugly Truth. And so all we're going to do tonight is just tell the truth because y'all know I love Bible verses. It says, the man who tells his story first always looks right until his neighbor comes and corrects it. You dig what I'm saying? So we got the neighbor in the building tonight, man, to correct the story. And This down. story is finna go down. So again, without further ado, man, let me let me jump into what the world wanna know, man. What what the people wanna know. But we're gonna start off real light and we're gonna warm ourselves up, man. So we know you are a former artist of Grape Tree Records. The biggest, in my opinion, rap gospel artist who came out who had the most significant artists who had impact. And again, when we say gospel artists, people who was able to impact the kingdom. Salute to that, because I am a believer. Shout out to Believer Circle. But when it when it when it when it comes to, to what you grew up in in Grape Tree, just start us from the beginning a little bit and we're gonna segue our way in. How did you even get on Grape Tree? Well man, bro, Grape Tree Records, man, came across my path once I got once I got saved, man, once I went to that transition, I was in the streets, I got saved. 
And then somebody came to me at church and was like, man, I remember you from rapping. I got this tape I want you to check out. So he handed me a new wine tape, man. Shout out to New Wine or Wino. He handed me a new wine tape. It was called The Bloody Fifth. So I listened to it and I'm like, man, you mean to tell me that you could love God and still rap? Like, oh, this is right up my alley, you know what I'm saying? So I, 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 I took it upon myself to start writing music from a different angle, more from like what I was learning from Bible studies and what I was learning from, from that, you know what I'm saying? And start incorporating it with my, with my rap skills. And that's how I started, you know what I mean? So what was your introduction to Grape Tree Truck? Like, well, like, like the, was it an audition? Did, 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 did you know somebody there? What was your introduction? Well, like, again, like being in music all my life, I always knew that that grind, you know what I'm saying? So once I got that tape of new wine, I looked on the back of that guy and I saw the address to Grape Tree Records on it. You know what I'm saying? I'm a hustler, baby. You feel me? I just want you to yeah. know. So so what I did was I reached out to him from that that information on the back of that tape. And Nolly Williams, which is the owner, he was like, you know, at this time we ain't really trying to sign nobody, but we got a uh compilation coming out. And you could submit a song for it. So I went, I wrote the song Kill Yourself. I sent it in to him. And about a week, week and a half later, he called me like, I want to sign you. you know what I'm so I signed with Grape Tree Records. I'm going to get into that. But I want to plug. If y'all go listen to that song, it's one of my favorite songs to date. Kill Yourself on Good vs. Evil uh, 2.0. So when you go and do it, go to Good vs. Evil 2.0 and uh, stream that. Make sure all the money young come to my man's. But when you signed, did you have any understanding of the industry? Oh man, none. I had like the basic, the basic artist understanding, but what not is the basic understanding. Like you know, you gotta have a manager. You know what I'm saying? You, uh, you know, mo mostly how to be an artist versus how to be a business person. I was all I was trained to be an artist, not a businessman. You know okay, I didn't and understand publishing. I didn't understand none of that. So you said basically within a week or two, you signed. How did you yeah. sign? Like, how, how did this signing go? Did you go into the Shh. office? Did you did you call home? Did he say, hey, I love this album. Here go $100,000. How did this signing process go for you with Grape Tree? Bro, this going to trip you out. That's that's why I got this hoodie on. I'm on my Floyd Mayweather Jr. today. Hey. So, you know what I'm so the, the way I signed with Grape Tree was... After after he told me over the phone, yeah, we want to sign you, they actually faxed me a contract by fax. And then I ran to this old school. I ran to Kinko's yeah. and grabbed the contract at Kinko's, signed that guy, and then faxed it back to him. And I was officially Grape Tree Records. Did you read what was on the contract? Of course not. I was just excited, man, from, you know, all my life trying to make it in the in the rap industry you know what i'm saying i was just excited like oh here go here go my opportunity and it's a positive opportunity and it was i was so i was so jesus i didn't care about what the contract said i so, just thought i was doing the right thing so you was loving the lord believing all right here go a disciple of curse or somebody who want to see us win in exactly, life and exactly. he know i'm a little bro out here he know what's really going on exactly exactly and i uh, you big bro so i know he giving me the right thing yeah you kind of you kind of i put my trust in him you know what i'm saying and not just not just him but all the big bros you know what i'm saying i put my trust in them because they they claim that they love the lord man that that that, that was their mission you know what i'm saying and as well as me you feel me so as a little bro i kind of did more following than leading as as it should be that's usually how i go there's mm -hmm. rankings you know what i mean there's definitely going to be rankings when you, you you sign a contract so you sign a contract and i know what you're signing so i assumptionly say what i don't normally do is assume but you ain't had no lawyer no 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 attorney man no lawyer the, so as i was talking as i was communicating with grape tree the owner of grape tree actually put me in tune with his lawyer it was some lawyer out of california he put me in tune with him later to find out that that same lawyer has signed all my publishing to himself Dang, so we, so I would say we would get into it, but how did you find out he signed your publishing to him? Like, you know, as as time went on, I started learning more about the business. Okay. And when I went to look up my publishing company, it it didn't exist. He he had it. So how old was you when you signed? 20, 19, 20. 
All right, so we're going to get into that very briefly. You excited, you just signed, which most young 19, 20 year olds would do, and even older. But how was the experience? What was going on? How did, how did, what was your first album? My first album was Good versus Evil. How did that go, man? How, man, how, how, bro. Did, how did that go? Recording, dealing with the people, touring, just, just give us a synopsis of what was going on. So, so all the, all the, all the magic started when we hit Sabrosa Studios. It was me and two producers. And we sat in one week. We called all the singers through and we dropped that whole album in a week. And just the vibe in the studio, man, was so powerful, man. You know, we would pray before every session. Just the just the the presence of God in that place, man. Like we just it was so much laughter, so much fun, so much love that went into producing that album. And we did it again in one week. You know what I'm saying? So from that to the day that I got the first box delivered to my door. I ripped that guy open. It's a box of those CDs, man. Good versus evil CDs. It was mind blowing. It was like, man, now I want more CDs. You feel me? Like, I've never been on a CD up to that point. You know what I'm saying? So well, what what city you in at this time? You still at home? You still I'm in career? Rockford. I'm in okay. Rockford, Illinois at this point. I, just, just got married, ooh. moved into our apartment. Like all of that stuff happened all at the same time. Record deal, uh, we birthed our, our child. And you know, being married at 19, you know what I'm saying? All it all at the same time, bro. It was a lot to deal with, bro, being so young. But was it exciting though? Like, hey, all right, I got a wife, I got a kid, and I know I'm finna blow. Like, 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 like Yeah, the like the blow part really happened overnight, man. Like one one day after that album dropped, I come home. Back then we had answer machines. Man, I pushed play on that answer machine, man. It was like 30, 40 messages. Can we, how much to bring you to California? How much to bring you to, to Pennsylvania? How much to bring you to Indianapolis? It might, I mean, it took off like a rocket, bro. It was mind blowing. It was straight mind blowing, bro. So you, you was feeling like, dang, this, this, this guy, this was going on. So you was able to tour, get to see the city, do your one too. Yeah, no doubt. We, you know, my first concert was in Denver, man. I'll never forget it. The dang. first big concert that I had was in Denver. And then from there, man, it was just everywhere, man. San Diego, Sacramento, California, New York. We just all over the place, man. It was wild. But the, one of the craziest parts about it was like sitting on the plane. And, you know, before you catch a flight, you buy a magazine to read on the way. I bought the Source magazine that day. It was the one that had Mace on it, dressed like the cat. You know what I'm saying? I'm flipping through that guy on the plane. And there go Grape Tree Records, man. They got me right in the middle of the Source magazine. I'm, I'm looking at the people behind me like, yo, that's me. That's me right there in this magazine. You know what I'm saying? I done made it. So, I mean, it was it was quick and it was mind-blowing, bro. You know, again, being that young, man, it was crazy. Nah, that was dope. So, you know you're doing something. You're doing the right thing. We know you released multiple. Well, he released multiple albums. How, how, did, it, how did it transition, so to speak, from Good versus Evil to your next album? Like, like, all right, the first album went, you torn. What was the second album called? The second album was Principalities. You know, by, by that time, by the time the second album started coming around, that's when the vibe with the label started changing. Because, again, being being the little bro, I would go out to these concerts with, with some of the artists, and I would hear a lot of the negative things that they was going through between the label. So it kind of started to sway me, too, to, to start looking at things a little more differently. You know what I'm saying? So... That's it started to transition right after I recorded that second album. Okay, so you ain't gotta give a dollar amount, but was you getting paid? Nah, man. I wasn't getting paid. You weren't getting paid off the shows? Nah. The, nah, we would I would get paid off the shows, but at that time it wasn't it wasn't a lot. You know what I'm saying? Then it was the churches, bro. We wasn't we wasn't on our Lecrae at that point. It was we weren't packing out stadiums and doing shows in, in big stadiums. It was more like youth groups going to big churches you know we we were getting booked for stuff like that in the beginning stages of it and that's all it was in the beginning wasn't nobody yeah, yeah, packing yeah. out no concerts nah, unless nobody. you was kurt franklin <laughs> yeah for real for real so you know it started off you know five five six hundred no more than a thousand people unless you're doing a festival okay you know what I'm saying and we would do we would be gone thursday to sunday you know what i'm saying like all over the united states bro getting it you know what i'm saying that's love that's mm -hmm. love and you talking about within a week this man looked on the back of a record label a record cd and said hey man let me call these fuck home said we ain't signed nobody but submit a compilation mm -hmm. get signed in a week album blow they drop your album you on tour 
You on tour Next uh, next album is ready Let me ask you a question real quick That first Outside of tour money Did you see any money From Any of the sales None Not at all I never I never saw no money From any sales bro And you know they they would have us to think that there wasn't no money really being made. You know what I'm saying? But that that wasn't the case, bro. That wasn't the case at all. They would have us to think that they spent multiple thousands of dollars to produce those projects. That wasn't the case at all. You know what I'm saying? They didn't spend over $4,000 to produce the project with the producers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they spent in marketing and, and promotion and all that. But, you know, that's part of the game. You know but back saying? then, gospel gospel rap was already not that big. No, it wasn't big at all. But so I'm I got two questions, and this is a big up. Like so, you you say to other bros, and I know two. I know it's like you, New Wine, and Lil Rascal. Who else was on the label? Man, we had Raz, we had Wine, Prime Minister, Prime Minister. Shout was out, a, Prime. Was a big big part of that label. You had LGYs, you had DCP. You know, you had Brothers Grimm. I mean, it was so many of them, bro. It was like Aisha. That was the female. Amani. He was the R&B, the R&B flavor. You know what I'm saying? It was like Grape Tree. That was one thing that they did. It was really like No Limit. They had, they was pumping the albums like, like crazy, bro. Like they had a lot of artists, man. Until the major label got involved. Until EMI got involved. When the major label got involved, they had them to cut the roster down. Okay, so back then, I don't even know if you could give an estimate, but just by shows, popularity, and popularity ain't something that I know that you're not big on, because you know you 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 a solid person. Do you think or do you know you was the biggest selling grape tree artist? Do you think somebody was selling bigger? Is there a way that you can know who was selling the most? Like just off of, we know who got the juice. Do you know that you were selling, selling, or do you think you were selling, selling? Well, I know I was selling, selling. Like, no matter where I went, every store, even your Tower Records, your FYEs, I used to go in and, you know, they used to have the cards on the back of the CD. I would ask the, the clerk if I could keep the card because it was me showing my license, like, this is me, can I keep it? Then I would write down the name, the, the year and the city that I got the card from. And nobody could ever keep the joint on the shelf. You know what I'm saying? Like, they all, we sell out of these as soon as they come. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, not knowing the industry and not keeping up with that, like, again, at that point, I was all Jesus. I didn't, I didn't you think. You no more. I didn't think it was business. So, so it was talking, God's business. Talking to the other bros, was any of those doing anything? Because I know y'all talk, you know, we, when you on the label, you talk to your label mates. Was any of, was any of the other artists doing that? Like, was they selling out in stores back then according to what you with the information that you had gathered we can't say like, yes or no yeah bro. i mean i don't i don't know about like them i have no idea but i know he was also selling a lot of uh like mixtapes what you would consider a mixtape he would have a compilation with all the artists from the label on the compilation so he was doing that but again like it's that whole if you don't know that's where you lose at I didn't even think to, to see who was selling what. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know nothing about Nielsen Sound Scan and none, none of that at the time. It was more like, I looked at, I was still looking at like a church thing. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. It was, to me, it wasn't like, oh, we finna blow up and be out here to the masses. It was like, nah, we on a mission. And to save this, is how we, this is how we getting out there. You feel me? And you know, that, was, that was my angle. And then until, like, you, like I was telling you around that second album, I ain't gonna lie to you, you know, I, I touched that little bit of success from the first one and because I didn't have structure, because, you know, I ain't gonna blame it on my brothers, but I didn't have no, I didn't have structure, nobody no to tell me, no guidance at all, it started to change me, you know what I'm saying, as far as like, now I'm finding out, oh man, they making big money, and I ain't getting none of it, it, it started to change my attitude, and it affected my faith, it started, my faith started to deteriorate, deteriorate over time, you know what I'm saying, Okay, so 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 we're going to get into it. Who was the owner of Grape Tree Records? The owner of the tree, Grape Tree Records, was Nolly Williams. He was, a, you know, young at the time, 20-some-year-old from California. You know what I'm saying? That wear, oh. that wear Wranglers, bro. Like a, a straight cowboy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Wranglers and it was tripped out meeting him, bro. When I first saw him for the first time, I was like, man, what the... 
My man had on this big Wrangler hat. His mustache used to twist around, you know what I'm saying? Like, like Luigi's? Yeah, he was different, bro. He was different, which I, I appreciated. You know, I love different, man, but bro was different, bro. And he was a, he's a, a business genius at a, at a young age, you feel me? So How old do you think he was back then? He was 26. He was 25, 26 when he started Grape Tree. And so he was putting plays together. Yeah, he was the, he was the businessman, you know, like like every everything about grape tree all the success all the success it had you know number one I, I i give that honor to god for sure but number two god used a very smart businessman to position us you know what i'm saying bet so i want to get into something man because i've watched something and it was nally and it was talking about grape tree and I'm going to ask them to put the video up. And then I'm going to ask your response. And I want you to tell me what you think your perspective of it from then to now. Yeah. How you feel about it. So we finna put the video up, man. And they could play it at any given time. I absolutely want to know, like, how do you feel? Because this was on the Rapzilla platform, which is a big platform. So they I want to see Zilla. the Yeah. Shout out to Rapzilla. Like I say, just, just have anybody produce a role. Their la just show me your last royalty statement. And they they do have them because we send them out on like clockwork, you know, and and it'll t it'll tell the tale of what really went down for, for them, like how much money they owed. And I'm using past tense because I'm not saying they owe me now. OK. And, you know, but I, I any artist I've always told them and, and I, I really don't engage, man. It's like I really literally don't engage because it's so trivial, bro. It's like. You know, I'm doing things, man. I'm I'm do, I'm I'm in other other sandboxes, you know what I'm saying? And that is like it's like going back and and I can't conjure up high school feelings cuz I don't I don't I'm emotionally mature and a lot of people aren't. Um and that's just a fact. It's not a slam. It's just you know, my mom was not emotionally mature. She was she had a master's degree in psychology. So not everybody, you know, goes through the cycle where they actually reach maturity for whatever Okay, okay, okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's so what's up. that was the clip I seen. I said, man, let me get my brother on the show. Man, I see the clip. And the reason why is if y'all look at the top, if y'all look at the bottom, it's Tony Coates. Yeah. AKA Antonio. So it has his albums on there when they're speaking of if they're mad about this or mad about that. Not saying it was aimed at him, but it's a little weird to me. I don't want to speak for him. It's a little weird to me, like why would these things be on here and knowing from doing a little research i don't think nobody got paid off of anything besides shows so i think the record label would have kept it all and he had to come in and try to clarify his name now mind you I, i'll say what you say the man came through god first of course was, was, was using him he came through but business wise nobody got no money and fortunately i've been able to talk to other people say man i ain't got nothing off of this man at all and he's not showed or opened the books up and this is not a, a crucifixion shout out to you nally for opening up grape tree allowing tony coates to get on there who has blessed me but i want to know your perspective like when you see something like that you see your album at the top and the bottom like hold on i know i'm the best selling artist on here you ain't never reached out to me and x amount of years like 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 what's your perspective or what's your response to what he's saying well you know i had to take my hood off of this one bro Ooh. i had to take my hood off of this one and, 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 and the bands i had to take the bands off too all right rapzilla this is for y'all what's happening this is, this is my perspective man this is my perspective man i have a godly perspective Amen. You know what I'm saying? For one, again, man, not not, not trying to bash Nolly, but like you said, man, I see my image on there. And a lot of people could get it misconstrued and think that he's talking about me directly just because of the way that the artwork was on that content. So that that that's the first thing that, that kind of threw me. Like, okay, so I don't know if this is clickbait. I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna tell you like this. First, my man was talking about royalty statements, which, you know, this this is almost 30 years old, bro. Damn. It's been almost 30 years. So my question would be like, man, who got royalty statements from 30 years ago? And then, you know, we on that podcast, man, and I love it. The ugly truth. 
the ugly truth about it is, I never got royalty statements from Grave Tree Records, man. <laughs> I never. Even uh -oh. even thirty years ago, I didn't get statements from Grape Tree Records. You know what I'm saying? Never got a statement. Never, and I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that never got the statements. I did get a letter. A letter. And the letter said, "Was it a check in the letter?" No check. The letter said, "Unfortunately, we 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 have regret to tell you that we lost the records for the first three months of sales." <laughs> Come on, dog. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, you feel me? Like. Wow. I, I remember getting those letters, you feel me? But uh, this is the thing, broski. Before Grape Tree Records, I was on probation and owed the state a whole lot of money. Okay. I was I was broke, man. Like, busted and, busted and disgusted. Nolly Williams paid my probation off for me, bro. Nolly Williams, Nolly Williams sent me the money to get into my crib. And, you know, there was never a time I couldn't call Nolly and tell him I'm having an issue and he sent me bread. You know what I'm saying? Forever grateful for that. I'll never forget, I never forget the good as well. But as far as all the stuff he was talking about on that on that podcast, that's falsified, bro. That's that's false. Nobody was getting royalty statements, dog. And again, I know my producers to tell you they didn't get over four four thousand dollars to produce the album. And there's only there's one thing, there's two words that I can say. Nielsen sound scan. You know what I'm saying? Like if I really want to know, if anybody out there know where I can get the sound scan plug, we run them numbers and see what really hey, got sold. We finna have hey, bro. Can we pull up Nelson Sound Scan, Good versus Evil, and then Principality by So let's do Good versus Evil because I feel like that was the one that was. But you 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 gotta have some kind of special account that costs a lot of this money. This twenty twenty four. That, oh, that, that young man dope. over there might be able to but, pull something up. But you know, if if anybody really wanted to know what was sold. There's a code on every CD. There's a code on every tape that gets registered when that thing is sold. You know Hold on, I, I, I got to break down what he mean for y'all, right? He said tape. As in when Biggie said, I rock until my tape, tape pop. pop. <laughs> he means a tape to the younger generation. He yeah. means you put it in, you push, push play. play. There's a piece of little paper at the bottom yeah, or a little yeah. screen that goes. And then there were CDs before. Like, I know y'all are screaming, but I just want to make sure because they call everything a tape or a project. Yeah, yeah, we're talking yeah. actual physical a copies. A real tape. A real tape. Yeah. So. You was able you was able to do anything you did and seeing that it's like, bro, I never received a dollar and you was able to I say confide, communicate, um this ugly truth, conversate right? with your brothers and nobody that nah, you know. nobody no none of the none of the bros explained. I'm not sure if they knew about the business. But none of the my big bros, none of them explained the business to me, bro. I was seeing some of them get checks. And nobody ever sat me down like, yo, you're a, you're a successful budding artist. You Maybe you should do this or you need a manager or let me check out your contract. Or, no, I never got none of that, bro. So let me ask you this question. And again, I don't put words in nobody's mouth. But to see that, do you think it's kind of on your part that you think it's like it's, it's very disappointing to see that with your name? Because it says Antonius at the bottom. We know that's your album. We can see half of the good versus evil. Like, is it disappointing to see? Like, hold on. It, I feel like not necessarily it's a shot, but I ain't never made a dollar off of any of these albums. Are you disappointed in the response or, or to get on here and say this versus him calling? Has he, Let me ask you this. Has he ever called you and said, hey, bro, this is how much you sold? This is what you want to tell No, you never. Publisher. He never did. Never called and said nothing like that. And as a smart businessman, he wouldn't. So my fault. this is how I see it. As believers, we live in two, we got two kingdoms we're dealing with. The natural kingdom and the spiritual kingdom. Facts. Let's talk natural kingdom first. As far as him and the way he is as a businessman and an entrepreneur in the natural kingdom, I can understand everything he would say on that, on that podcast. But if it was from the spiritual side, I would look for more. Let me make sure this young man is good. Let me let me make sure I don't do what the industry has been doing to these young men for the last however many decades as far as screwing them and not being straight with them about how the industry work and about their bread. And when you take a, a young person that's a new convert in the Lord and then he got to experience going through the same betrayal that he would experience if he was in the world. That's very painful. That's like your. That's like the church hurt that a lot of people dealing with because you put your faith in these people, 
because they they say that they love the Lord and you take it you take their word for face value and you become disappointed when they show you otherwise. So it took it took me a while to understand it ain't the person that you're fighting with. So as far as Nolly, I have no beefs with him. I love him and respect him for everything that God used him to do with that label that he started. As a businessman, he's dope and he's awesome. But as a brother, I expected way more out of him. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna use two words. I call it God publishing. When you when you when you dealing with God, you expect folk to bring you up because we're not out here just to make money. Right. But we gotta feed our families. And Absolutely. we want to understand and why do people perish? Lack of knowledge. So I think if I hear you clearly, and again, I'm not putting no words. I'm going to say that through the whole episode. I would think my older brother would give me the game. Like if you're talking to your kid, you can give him some knowledge. Like, hey, Absolutely. listen, this is what's going on. You could look. Let's just say you sold 10000 I like, look, nigga. I, excuse my French, but I spent 6000 on this, 4000 on this, 2000 on this. Yes, you made 40000 Right. But if I made and I sold a hundred thousand copies, right, and break bread. And, and break some bread, yeah, break no bread, bread is crazy, yeah, bro. No and then bread. I said, God publishing, you said something. I picked up the audience might might not have. They signed your publishing away when you signed yeah, your contract. Absolutely. Now that's now that's the other part of it. This is the only money that I received, and I didn't get all the money. So when they switched over to EMI Records, we signed new contracts. That's when he he had to break it down to five artists. And I was one of the five. We got new contracts. So when signing that contract, I was supposed to get $6,000 for the publishing deal. And then $6,000 for the exclusive deal. I got the initial six, but never got the other six. Never got the other half. You know what I'm saying? Like, Bro never honored them contracts, bro. He never honored them contracts, man. So let me ask you this, and I, and I don't like to say devil's advocate because I don't ever want to say devil because that ain't me. But do you feel like he owed you or EMI or whoever you said owed you? No, Grape Tree was the label. My agreement was between myself and Grape Tree Records. Okay. So Grape Tree Records, they owed me the money. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not even sure how much it was, but I'm telling you. I don't even want the money now, but now I'm interested in knowing what was sold, man, just to know, you know what I'm saying? To I'm understand like, the business. To understand, we got to get that Nielsen sound scan, man, and see how many albums that boy sold, man. Well, listen, if y'all out there and y'all an Antonius fan and y'all listen to Good versus Evil or any of the new music, if you've heard Congratulations or any of the current music, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, this one, um, On My Game. I mean, he got a lot. I'm just saying things that are my personal favorites. You know what I mean? If you hear any of that, pull up Nelson Scout Sound Scan. Sound Scan. scan. Yep. And then go back. I know y'all got it because I be following him online. Like, bro, you got folk that be he getting. And, and, and this is the thing. Let me be clear. The older generation, we don't care about social media because you got to be popping in the real world. This man was popping in the real world. You got to be popping before social media. So somehow, some way, he was able to reach a lot of people no internet no internet none of that and meaning he reached me it wasn't internet when i got his cd somebody gave me his cd with the rest of grape tree on it and i only listened to him they gave me two cds they gave me i think it was a compilation with all the artists and they gave me antonius and they knew where i was from they knew how i got down they knew what was up no disrespect to nobody else on the album. I'm just saying me person my personal favorite was Antonis because it was a relatable. You always gonna have your favorite always gonna be your most relatable. And let me say something I wanna and, and we're gonna get back to it. Cause I asked a young man who his favorite artist is and he said a little scrappy. Shout out to you, Scrappy, but I ain't never heard nobody say that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> back to Tony Coates though. That ain't a shot, Scrappy. I'm just saying, you know you ain't the best artist in the world, but you're a great man to make money. When you're going through these type things, wife, family, kids, da da da. Now that you're older, it's a two part question. What do you wish Nally would have did, and what would you have done, knowing what you know? Well, first, I wish, I wish Nally would have kept it real on that last interview that I saw him do. I wish he would have kept it real, and what I would have done differently is. I would have studied the, the business more. I would have obtained myself a good lawyer. 
you know, I would have understood publishing before I signed a publishing deal. You know what I'm saying? I would have I would have been educated before I jumped into into a business. So let me send a shout out to all my young men out here, everybody in any business, any industry, whatever you in, get to know it. I was just watching the video of my pastor last night. It was like, yeah, know everybody, love everybody, but verify. Verify what's going on. Verify your contract. Verify. I don't care how old you is. You get something, send it to somebody else. And as our culture, we don't want nobody in our business understandable. We don't want nobody hating or none of that. But send your contracts in. Verify what's going on. See if it's a good deal. Because at the end of the day, this is what I say. In my opinion, this has nothing to do with him. This is my opinion. If you have zero dollars, ain't no such thing as a bad contract if you're getting some money. If you're homeless and 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 I'm not saying this is his situation, hear me out. I'm gonna put it in a different perspective that y'all can understand. Wheezy and Birdman. Yes, Birdman earning 52 million. We'd have never known no Wheezy without a Birdman. So, but there is a such thing as signing a terrible deal. And then we can go to Thug. Hey, I signed a terrible deal. I knew I was gonna blow. Cool. There's no such thing as if your mom is struggling, your dad is in jail, and somebody finna give you twelve thousand dollars and they finna make twelve million. But that ten thousand will get your dad out, that two thousand is gonna pay your mom's rent, making sure that y'all not homeless. Is it a terrible deal yet? Are they taking advantage of you yet? I'm not saying take the deal. I'm just saying sometimes when you know you him, like Antonius was able to be him after all of that, and he still got fans on top of fans. Sometimes you take the deal and you rock out with it knowing it's a bad deal. But if you know before it's a bad deal, shout out to Gilly. You know it's a bad deal. You got some understanding. You got a lawyer. You got a team around you. You don't take the deal. So this is this educational learning process right here. This is a little quick little intermission. Talk to people. The Bible says with many counselors, you can wage war. That's on anything, meaning you can go into something and you can handle your business around many counselors, meaning counselors. Counselors have to be certified, verified. You can't go ask your friend who don't have nothing. You can't go ask your mama who ain't in the industry. You have to ask counselors. The counselor is in the industry that you're in. They are successful in the industry that you're in. No disrespect to de deadly strength. But I would never tell nobody go sit under deadly strength as an NBA player. We're always going to name the top people. Go sit under Michael Jordan. Go sit under Allen Iverson. Go sit under LeBron James. R.I.P. Kobe. You know what I mean? Go sit under KD, Kyrie, whoever you want to name. Julius Irvin, Oscar Grant, whoever, whatever. But the greats and the good people of it, because I'm listening to my brother and it's touching my soul for lack of knowledge. To go back to my original point, people perish. So with that, I'm going to let you say any statements. And I got some other questions to jump in because we went out of town, man. And shh, yeah, the album and all that. And, and, and that is that. But you got any final remarks for the Grape Tree family? Man, GT for life, man. You know what I'm saying? I love the Grape Tree family, man. I love, you know, Grape Tree isn't even a label no more, bro. You know, but I mean, Raz, that boy Raz bringing the label back. But as far as the essence of Grape Tree Records and what it stood for and what they what they've done, what they've accomplished in the Lord, man, I'm Grape Tree for life, bro. Life. Hey, Rapzilla, y'all heard what my brother said, man. Y'all heard the response life. of what was going on because it's bigger than the label, man. It's in his heart. It's embedded in what it is, man. And because of shout out to you, Nolly. Shout yes, out to sir. everybody yes, was in, everybody else that was on the label that 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 encouraged my brother because I'm telling you no exaggeration, I'll make it personal. It helped me. You dig what I'm saying? It helped me transition into a point of really connecting with Christ because I was able to hear someone that was able to relate to the life that I just came out of. He had a song. Um, it might have been Kill Yourself. You said, uh, was it a song? What is it? A skit on there on, on Kill Yourself? Yeah, Kill Yourself. Yeah. So that was like one of the first songs I heard. Like. It's better than it's better to read the Bible than ducking bullets. You tell me, how did yeah. that part go? Was that it? Was it right? It's it's better than better to read the Bible than dodge them bullets. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, when I heard that, I'm like, oh, sh excuse me, but I'm gonna say it. It's real niggas that love the Lord. Cause I'm gonna tell you right, I ain't following nobody soft. If God's soft, I don't want following. Oh, I've been shot at, stabbed. Yeah, I've been beat up too much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I gave more than I took. You feel me? Yeah. But, 
you know but that it, rough life bro we are a lot of us come out of that rough life man but that's 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 the blessings right there man god don't he doesn't matter what environment you come out of he pull you out that environment and he turn you into a new creature you know but saying? you're gonna be able to relate so the thing with christ is this man he ain't looking for perfection and i and, and i heard this man and it stick with me only thing he's looking for is you to answer him when he talks to you he ain't got to talk to you every day every day you could be kept talking to him connected but when god asks you to do something do it because it's going to affect somebody else's life Regardless if you in sin or out of sin, people could tell you whatever, bro. Because we could look at today's episode, I mean, today's times, and we could praise David, put him on a pedestal, and then he smashed somebody in the congregation. And then they like, oh, David wasn't real. No, nah, he got us out of this. He killed Goliath. Right. A he man, a man at the God's own heart. A man at the God's own heart. Right. And it's not a cop out sin. I'm just saying, when you see somebody do something wrong, bro, like, and, and, and they're professed Christians, don't put perfection on Christianity. Ooh, right, that right. was a bar. Do Straight not bars. put perfection on Christianity. So, you know, that's, how, that's how I feel about the whole Nolly, Nolly Williams grape tree situation. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just broke that whole situation down for me. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. There's no animosity, there's no lost love. I don't look at Nolly like he's an evil person. You know, if you want to be technical about it, I've done. I probably done more evil than Ali Williams have. You know what I'm saying? Right. You want to be real about it, so I'm not coming from a judgmental standpoint, but I'm coming from a point of like, bro, you know, there's got to be some kind of accountability when something happened 30 years ago, and my man said it in the thing. You know, I don't, I don't even entertain it, but you did the interview. You entertained it. You know what I'm saying? And that entertaining it was like ripping the bandaid off a wound that happened 30 years ago. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, it got to be some kind of accountability, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody know the truth. Fact. So why hide it? You know what Fact. I'm saying? If you if you were more apologetic about, about the truth, you know, it would be a different angle. You know what I'm saying? But regardless of the angle, man, nothing but love for Nolly, man. Nothing but love for Grape Tree. He did an awesome thing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm always respect and love him for that, bro. My man handled this so gracefully, man. Everybody can't handle it gracefully because he, he's 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 did nothing but big up Nolly, and he just said one issue like, "Hey, this this money part cool." But at the end of the day, thank you. I'm still Antonius. You know I call saying? him Tony Coates. He still got a gang of fans out here. Like I still be like, "Dang, bro, you know these folk rock with you." And I call him. He be like, "Oh, how many views? Da da da. What's going on?" Because bro is not stuck on social media, and and, and even getting into that now. For lack of knowledge, people perish. I feel 100% Jesus got to be online. Got to. Got to be online. Like if he was here in today's time, he got to be online. So talking about online, man, I had the privilege, me, my producer, my brother Antonis, man, we was able to go to Chicago, man. Shout out to the shot. Fire documentary that we shoot, man, that's dropping. It might already be out. Yeah, that first episode dropped last night. Oh, first episode dropped last night. Yes, wee. Sir. yes, sir. Hey, it's some fire going on. No rap cap. It's a whole lot of fire in this episode, man. You want me to introduce it, or you could just tell them about it, man, because you know my introduction. Man, wild, well, man. Look, tell them, we, tell them about when we went to Chicago. Put it however you want to put it. Man, look. Long story short, found out. You know, what I'm saying moms was was telling me a little lie about who my father was. Man, it was a a big old mess, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, God led me, man, to fly out there and meet this guy, man. You know what I'm saying? After, we'll, we'll say that for another time, man. But I went out there and met him, man. And my, my fellas, man, they came with me. You feel me? Uh, it, was a, it was a crazy experience, man. And the I Just Want to Live documentary dropped last night on YouTube. And I already got people calling me, bro. And this is where the accolades come in. Bro. Your documentary had me in tears. I had I had one of my clients call me and say, "There's a young lady here that don't know who her father is, and she interested in reaching out to him. Can you can you help her? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's what that's what this is all about. So to harp on the situation, Nolly, shout out to you. What you have done has allowed this man to continue 30 years later to touch hearts and move people. I'm gonna tell you my perspective. Bro said, man, I want to shoot a documentary. I'm like, about what? He said, man, you know what I've been telling you? I ain't never felt like this man is my dad. I'm talking about before any of this. Like, man, da da da, boom, boom, boom. I just found out who my dad is. I'm like, <laughs> what? 
I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I ain't gonna tell Holmes A's, but you gotta remember he had he sold tapes, tapes. and CDs. So we'll leave it at that. But when he when he when he told me like, bro, I want you to be a part of this, man, for for show, sure. for show. Sure. But bro, when he told I, I me, feel like we gotta go real deep with this one, bro. I'm finna. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you a part of the story that I wasn't able to tell in the documentary. Let's do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give. <laughs> hold, I'm on. Gonna give hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Exclusive live and Tony is Tony Coates in the building for to drop some exclusive content that I don't even know and that's Man. crazy. So look, this is how crazy this thing is. Eleven years ago, I was on a, a elevator with an evangelist. Shout out to Erica Diamonds. It was Erica Diamonds' mother. She said, "I want to pray for you." So she prayed. Then she looked at me. She said, "There's two women in your life that are practicing witchcraft." You know, I'm like, Damn. cool. I'm like, I'm like, okay. In my mind, I'm like, man, which one of these girls and gave me the spaghetti, man? Be for real. Who, who gave me the lasagna, man? Yeah. You know I'm like, okay. Yeah, you know, who, who buried my drawers in the backyard? You feel me? I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking on that level. So all these years go by, bro. And when I took that DNA test and I found out, you know, about my pops or whatever, it was so emotionally, emotionally challenging, bro. You know, I just cried out. I'm laying there on my couch, man, and, and the spirit of God said, witchcraft, look up that word witchcraft. So I broke my phone out and I looked up the word witchcraft and it says, when a person tries to manipulate a situation outside of their control. And I'm like, that's what witchcraft is. I'm like, wow, right? So when I when I broke down the 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 story, you know, I ain't gonna put her name out there, but I called, I called somebody, like, you know, okay. tell me what's up. Okay. I can't because I respect your mother. You know what I'm saying? I can't tell you. She got to tell you the story. But your father's name is such and such. And I'm like, wait a minute. Two women knew. For all of these years. I almost told my age. Two women <laughs> knew. Two women knew that, that Mr. Johnny wasn't my real dad. And that's when I knew God was involved in it. Because that memory came back. Remember, remember when that evangelist told you? Two women, witchcraft. Right. Boom. The meaning of witchcraft. And then I saw that. I'm like, yo, God is all up in this. You know what I'm saying? That all of that helped me to deal with the situation, man. God being there and 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 putting those little light posts to guide my way helped me to deal with the situation. He did it when you was prepared and you was ready for it. Yep. If it happened yep. beforehand, it would have been chaos. Got out of control. Chaos. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. so when you called me like bro i found my dad because you know i know bro tony coates coates this this family here da 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 i'm like all right then he's like bro man i found i'm like what you talking about i took an ancestry test tell me why you took the ancestry test because all right she told you that 11 years but yeah so negroes don't so, just wake up and take ancestry nah, tests. niggas don't even get dna kit for real tests on that you know what i mean so so my grandma was turning 80 last may 80 years old and I'm thinking, I'm like, man, what am I going to do for my grandma? So we rented a big spot, man. We threw her a big old party, man. And it just bothered me that my grandma never knew nobody with our last name. I'm the only Colts in the family, bro. Like, I'm the only male Colts in the whole family. Everybody else, their last name is different. It's Crawford. So I'm like, as a gift, I need to find out who my grandma and people is. Kind of connect with some Colts. C-O-L-T-S, right? So I take the test. And it started coming back C-O-A-T-S. And I'm like, wait a minute. And one of my clients told me, he said, man, you know, back in the slavery days, they spelt their names how they pronounced them. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I got you. So, But by DNA, my last name is C-O-A-T-S, which I was able to connect to Turkey Town, Alabama. The slave plantation is still there to this day. I was able to connect with the owner of that plantation. And I started finding out about the family. And the more I searched, I was able to find my grandmother's father, her father, a picture of her father. Okay. So he, he passed away, but I was able to show my 80-year-old grandma a picture of her father and show her pictures of her sister and give her more insight on where she came from. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention, you know, a few of my family men members hinted around that my dad was different as well. I always felt it in my soul, though, even when I was little. But a couple of my family members, like one of them was like, boy, you look, 
your mama used to love such and such and blah, blah, blah. Do you know who such and such is? You know who Bobo is? I'm like, nah, you know what I'm saying? But she knew, you feel me? Like some people knew that, that this Bobo was my father, bro. I just didn't know it. Wow, that's a crazy story. Listen, you know say at this young age, so you gotta know this, this is 30 years after Grape Tree. After. This is 2023. My man's kept it a hundred with itself, but you know what? I was just talking to somebody, and what you did was very important. You was able to see a mirror. You was able to continue to want to grow, continue to know, because you know, throughout the Bible, it's always lineage. No disrespect to women, but it never named the woman's name when it came to lineage. It always said the son it is, the father, the son. Right, right, right. No disrespect right. to women. We love y'all. Y'all are important to us. We don't come to earth without y'all. Right. But you wanted to see who you connect with. I wanted and to I want to say one thing, with. bro. So I was able to go there, right, rock out with my brother. And no exaggeration, bro. Soon as we go through the door, this man's singing. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's and that's that's them jeans, bro. See, my my pops, he he's a drinker. He like to drink, bro. And that's singing is the way that he communicates. Look at his son. You know what I'm saying? Music. It's 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 in the blood. And it equates all the way to his mother. His mother was a pianist for churches around around Rockford. So she went from church to church and they paid her to put, to play the piano, you know what I'm saying, in the churches. So, you know, and then the whole family, bro, they all, they like to drink and sing, you know what I'm saying? And that's how, even before I got saved, that's what I used to do. I like to drink that fifth of Hennessy and I'm going I'm to I'm rap, I'm going to sing all the oldies, you know what I'm saying? It's them jeans, bro. It's the jeans. It's the connection to know what you need to break, to know why you're doing what you're yes, doing. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I know my daddy drink and drink and then i keep it a thousand let the lord go to church pay my tithes and offerings i still be on yak yeah man but yeah, i know man. that the, the lord be like hey all right you've been drinking too much he'll pull that fishing reel out and be like all right and i go 30 days sometimes 60 sometimes six months no drinking because it never yeah. says you can't it's just that i have an indulging personality if i do it i'm gonna do it big if my brother do it he gonna do it big but what i want to big up is it's not even humility, it's courage. Because it's fearful to know that I've grew up with a man my entire life. And it's a possibility I could find out that this man ain't my, my father. That changed my whole history. Yeah. You know, your whole history you. been changed. You're still not, I, I can say it, and I'm not going to say I don't care what you say. It's still a process. It is, bro. It is. It is. And in that process, God showed me something. All of the family members that's connected with the person that I thought was my dad, Man, they still love me like that never happened, bro. And that's powerful, man. That's powerful. My brother James, even though biologically he's not my real brother, he's more my brother than if he was biologically my real brother. You that's all you saying? grew up with. And it's none of the love changed, but the information, like you say, it, it changes you because, okay, I thought this lady was my grandmother, and I thought I came from Mississippi, and I thought all my life, I'm banking on these facts. And it's like, wait a minute. It's a whole nother set of people. You have nothing to do with this set of people. Your set of people over here. You, It's like, wow, man. It was mind-blowing, bro. Know and your tribe. Yeah, you got to know it. You got to know it. And this is this is where the problems come in, you know. All respect to my mother, man. My mother was only 16 when all of that, that stuff happened with her. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't always the it ain't always the man, bro. Sometimes the moms can be toxic, bro. I'm not I'm not calling my mother toxic. My mother was only 16. So her mindset was the mindset of a child, you know what I'm saying? But there's nice. women out here, bro. They hold their kids, man, from they from the parents, man. And one thing I I hate, bro, is when you got a child and you you give your child another man's last name, bro. You marry you marry a, a new husband his last name is Clark, and you give a child that's not his false that last name. False identity. You know I'm what I'm saying? You are false identity. You feel me now? You, you what you're doing is you you're burying that boy's history. You're burying you you you're taking who he is and you're putting him. You're burying in that. You know what I'm saying? Every every child deserves to know who their real parents are, man. That's, Biologically, no matter no matter what happened, no matter none of that. In in some cases, you know, I get it. You feel me? You gotta, you might have to keep a child away from a certain kind of person. 
I don't even saying? agree with that, and I don't agree disagree with you much. Let them know, and then they can choose. Yeah, like, they gotta hey, decide. They gotta decide. Yeah. I tell everybody yeah. around me, my loved ones, the ones I love, my babies that know me. I want you to see. Yeah, I'm not telling yeah. you to choose this over that. Yeah. See so that you can know what you identify you with. And know. Sometimes, and I understand, and I, if I can say this respectfully, you identify and you know what you like. I don't want to identify with that. Holmes, Holmes, an alcoholic. I mean, that's nothing I want to. Not, not right, 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 with, right, But right. that's nothing I want to take on. I wouldn't want him raising me. Yeah, you dig what I'm saying? Right. To, to, to value your point. Right. And I appreciate. Johnny, my stepfather, right, right, rocking with me. It's not a diss to him. No, no, no. This is the more. This is more ugly truth, and this was hard to do, man. So when I found out all about this, I called Johnny. He was one of the first people I called about it. I was like, "Yo, man, ain't nobody telling me the truth. I need to know what's up." So he told me, supposedly, what's the truth, and I never heard him cuss a day in my life, man. He was like, "Man, fuck that. You still my son," and bro. I had to I had to tune back and say, out of all respect, I don't I don't got no love lost. You weren't a good father. And I'm like, I'm like, all my life, I tried to I tried to get acceptance from you and you never gave it to me. When I was 17, we was in the car and I was telling you how I felt and you cried, but you never you never told me the truth. You know what I'm saying? So it was it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm losing my dad. It was like I knew you wasn't my father by the way you treated me. You would take my mm. brothers to Disney, leave me home. You take mm. my brothers on trips to Wisconsin Dells, and they come back. Man, we had fun at the Dells. He didn't know what was going on, but I would walk away from his house with my head down. What's wrong with me, man? Why my dad won't take me to Disney? Why my dad don't love me the way he loved his other sons? So it was yeah. it was painful growing up and going through it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, hey. Nah, you ain't raised me. I want a connection. You raised me. I don't want a connection. Whatever the case may be, this is more about being led by what my brother did and facing what's in the mirror. Because some of y'all don't want to know who y'all fathers is because you like, ah, da, da. nah, know who he is and know what's going on. Listen, I'm not ashamed of my pops, bro. You did, and I'm blessed. Even hearing my brother's story, I'm blessed. And I say this to the audience, I'm blessed because. I know my dad's flaws. I know what, when I get to acting crazy, I'm like, that's that Ed Jones. And I'm <laughs> Ed Jones. So my daddy's name was, I know what I'm doing. I know when I get to hustling. I know when I get in rooms that technically don't have paperwork to qualify for, but I'm in there. My dad always been in there with mayors and presidents and senators. I say, I just say, with my brother's story, he been in rooms like, man, I've been that guy, but I never identified with the man that say my father because he's always been a star. No disrespect to nobody else. I don't know no other star that come from that like that. Bro, always been a star, and it's not a it's not a condescending to no one else if y'all watching. It's not a condescending. But, Bruno, you just knew you was different and you was special. Is that yeah, right or yeah, wrong? Yeah, from like, jump. Yeah, you from didn't jump. take me here. You didn't do this. That's one thing. Like, you right. wasn't acknowledging me as a son. Right, right, right. But, nigga, they is. Right. They acknowledging me as great. Right. They showing me, like, nigga, I'm awesome. Right, Where is right. this awesomeness coming from? It was coming from God, bro. Facts. And that was that was the deciding factor in my life right there. When I look back at it, you know, young parents, you know, they apparently they saying that my old man raped my mother. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I came into being. So I had to even deal with that going into the situation, not knowing if it was true or not. But I, I had to face the situation. From the standpoint of like, you know what, you you're still my father, man. No matter what, and and God would like me to honor you. You know what I'm saying? But that's that. That's those years of building up to know forgiveness, to know forget, to know love. Because yeah. if you hold on to resentment and bitterness, it 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 damages the bones. Unforgiveness physically causes a problem. I can tell y'all the scripture. Unforgiveness, bitterness causes the bones to brittle. And to me, when the bones brittle, I think of bone cancer. I think a cancer period of you're hurting yourself. You're attacking yourself every day. Yeah, and absolutely. you chose not to. Right, right. Which is a big thing. Like, man, I'm not finna hurt myself. Right. Trying to hurt this person. And you know that that equates into the grape tree situation. It's the same thing. Now the grape tree, Nolly Williams situation, is part of my healing as well. And you know, I'll go as far as to say, my my music hit this certain plateau, you know what I'm saying, where I considered it like, yeah, God is really with me. 
But then once all of the, the money and all that started getting involved, I started looking at it differently. Like, you know, my, my like I said, my faith started to deteriorate. And it was it was due to that bitterness, man, and that unforgiveness. Man, F Nolly, F the tree. I don't want to be on the label no more. Y'all making all this money. I'm getting evicted from my crib. You know, my, my attitude shifted because I became angry at the label. I became angry at what Grape Tree was doing. And it, it didn't affect Nolly. He still made his bread. It affected me, bro. Like, it, it affected my music. It affected my creativity. It affected my marriage because I ended up divorcing. You know what I'm saying? So never It affected find, my children. So never find value in the man. Always find value in God because you said, Always. man. Y'all, y'all paying this, y'all doing that, but where my value at? Right. But at the end of the day, value only comes from God, and God is inside of us. And people may think that's weird, but it's the same. God is inside of us. We inside of God, and He, he uses us to touch each other. Facts. He used He used Nolly to get all of us to where He wanted us to be. So I got a question, and I'm going to. Um, Briefly step aside because I want you to answer this because I was there and I know this was a pair. This is where uh, uh, this big bro to me, this is where I teared up and, and, and my heart was hurt and, and my tears started to bubble up in my eyes. You had to go talk to your mother about this situation and she cried and, and step pop's eyes was watering. You was able to keep it together, but you were saying things and your mom was explaining and, and for me it was heartbreaking because the situation at hand was all new like you said pulling the band-aid off fresh how was that for you to go there and you kept it so let me use a better word i gotta say it, man i mean you kept it so p regardless of what anybody want to say you you delivered it you didn't accuse her you gave her love you gave your stepfather love as y'all watch the documentary y'all see you just was like, however y'all feel, I still love y'all, if you want to tell. Right, right. So for me, man, it was important, man. Like it took it took a long time, but me and my mother, man, we got over that we got over that drama, bro. We got over the fighting, man. We got over the we got over the, the confusion. And again, part of forgiveness, man, is you gotta forgive people and then you gotta treat them like you've forgiven them. You can't say, Oh, I forgive you and then treat a person like you don't forgive them. So for me, it was important, man, to protect my mother's feelings, man, to protect her heart. You know, I didn't want to get out. You did this to me and you did this and you lied about this. I, that's not that's not my vibe with my mother, man. My vibe with my mother is you were young. I love you no matter what happened. I'm old school, man. I don't care what mama do. You know what I'm saying? Mama, mama can push me off a bridge. You feel me? I'm a still lover. You know what I'm saying? Because she's my mother. You know, what I'm saying? just no other reason. She's my mother. And I wanted to protect her feelings, man. I wanted to protect her mind, her heart. You feel me? So she didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to force no, no, no kind of talking on her. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want her to come out and say nothing that she didn't want to say or do nothing that she didn't want to do, just out of respect. Because even though it was painful, I still love and respect my mother, man. You feel me? And as well as my father, my stepfather. I respect them both because they were young. And they did the best they could to raise me, man. You know, the rest is on God, fam. Nah, that's that's hard. I hear that. That's called, it's not my opinion. It's a fact. It's the truth. That's called the love of God. He was able to go in there with the already forgiven heart, the love of God. And she was able to spill out. I don't even want to say a secret. We can say a secret. What she been holding on to for years. Years. But I'm going to tell you why. And I never told him this. But he already knows it. She did all that to feel to protect him and protect her. Yep. I don't want you around a nigga like this. And I got to protect you as a mother. Their first thing is to protect. Right. Period and point blank. Their first thing is to protect and make sure that they're okay. You watch a pit bull around some pit bull puppies. Oh, yeah. I want to protect them. So she's like, I want to make sure he great. And at the end of the day, I read something the other day that it said the reputation. She also want to protect her reputation. Man, I didn't do that. Y'all not gonna believe me. Who believe? Uh, uh, who who y'all think believe Mary when she said she pregnant by the Holy right, Spirit? Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Right. And then we lived in the area. I gotta remember. I told y'all, Grape Tree almost thirty years old. So then we talking about my brother's mother. You know what I mean? It's a different era back then. Way different. It's a totally different era where 
it's not too far out of the civil rights and slavery shit right, if right, you just right. want to keep it a thou wow. And they you know they I mean? was all about saving face back then. Oh, so it was like, oh, I ain't then. sleep with nobody. I had the same man the whole time. But nowadays, it's like, yeah, I slept with that nigga. Yeah, he smashed last night. Like, the, this yeah. is a whole different vibe, bro. The women were more wholesome back then. Well, they act they acted like they were more wholesome back then, but they was freaking too, bro. You know what I'm saying? But they weren't as open as they are now with it. It yep. wasn't. It wasn't no pound town talk. It wasn't a uh, um, uh, uh, celebration. Of, right, right. I'm a whore. Right, right. You know what I mean. Hoes right. used to be hoes because they was quiet. Like hoes was never proud of what they were doing. Right. You dig what I'm saying? So the point of all this is what I'm saying, man. Is they done what they need to do and get it done. The documentary just dropped yesterday, so that had to be January 18th. Make sure y'all go cop the documentary. Make sure y'all handle that business. But we are gonna get into a couple other stories. I had the pleasure to meet his brother. I got to see Johnny. I got to see a couple of his player partners. Um, we got to go see. Let's talk about Gary, bro. Ooh, Gary Williams, man. A part That's of Great dog. Tree, bro. That's another time. This name, this man had me tearing up two times in Chicago, man. Well, shoot, man. Gary, Gary was a, a dope producer, man, from the crib, bro. I used to actually buy my clothes from Gary. He worked at a clothing store. So you get all your Davucci. You get all your Havana Joes. You got to be from up north to understand what them Havana Joes was bopping like, you know, B boots, you know what I'm saying, all of that good stuff. But one day Gary Belly, pulls Belly. up, man, Gary pulls up at the at the store in a brand new BMW convertible, red. I'll never forget it. Man, Gary, how you get this, bro? Oh, man, I got this off your royalties, Tone. And that was another, that was another time that I found out. About the money that was being Another made. Thorn in your side. Man, it hurt when he said it, bro. I was like, damn, for real, dog? And I was driving a station wagon at the time with a with a smashed door on the passenger side. Hold on, what kind of station wagon was it? Was the was the seat facing the window or, or No, or not that face? old. Not oh, okay. that old. Okay, okay. Not okay. that old. Okay. <laughs> not that old. But uh, you know, Gary Gary produced a majority of the grape tree music. He actually lived at Grape Tree Records. He lived on on online with them guys, man. You feel me? And the last time I spoke to him, it was chopping it up just like me and you chopping it up. And then I saw it on Facebook, man. He caught multiple sclerosis, man. So, you know, I knew he was in the bed, but I didn't know to what extent, you know, he was down until we saw him. He can't walk. I mean, he could talk, he could walk, but he can't. I mean, he could talk. He can't walk. He can't walk. Yeah, he, he can't stuck get out of the bed. bed. He yeah. has he has a twenty four hour caregiver for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and the that was, love, I can't wait y'all watch this documentary, man. Y'all gotta watch him. And this is coming from a person from the outside looking in. I met Tony years after Good versus Evil. To see it, like he said, Ed, the way I feel about you, bro, is the way I feel about Gary. To walk in there, this man is in the bed where there's a little hanging thing. Sometimes they yeah, gotta pull man. and jack him up and all that. Yeah, man. And how hurt Tony was to see him. But how happy Gary was to see Tony was crazy. Yeah, bro. that was nuts, bro. That man that was, was excited nuts. to see you. He smiled. That was nuts. And he got all his words out clear. Uh, and we understood him every clear, word, bro. bro. We understood every word. Every bro. word. Every word. You know, then I found out his wife had left him too. You feel me? It was like, man, boy. Like just just to see your partner like that, man, that's it's painful, dog. And what what really cut me was when the girl was like, "Oh, he don't got a lot of visitors." I'm like, "What you mean, man? Yeah, man. What you mean? Like everybody used to get beats from this dude, man. Everybody used to look at this dude like he was the next Dre, man, around the, around the town, bro. And to see him like that, man, that was that ate me alive, bro. That ate me alive. So you know, that's why that's why we did Good versus Evil 2.0. Because Gary was a major producer in that joint, you know what I'm saying? And I wanted to find a way to help him. So I put 2.0 together so I can donate, you know, a lot of the proceeds to his multiple sclerosis fund. I'd rather see him in one of them little wheelchairs, the electronic joints that you can drive around the town, man, and lay in the bed all day like that, you feel me? Because he's still there, bro. Like, from talking to him, inside, he the same Gary, man. Nah, it's mentally, just, yeah, definitely mentally, he's still there. Yeah. His body just tapped out on him. And that's him. it, bro. You know what I'm saying? But he a strong dude, man. And that, that that blessed my soul, bro. It let me know, man, like, we need each other, dog. You never know. You know what I'm saying? I might be the next one to get it. You feel me? Well, I hope not, my brother. Uh, I don't want to speak that. We're going to speak life. We finna go on tour, documentary dropping, celebration dropping, step-by-step step dropping. Uh, I just want to live dropping Let's already. Let's go. 
You dig what I'm saying? So before we wrap up, I just want to give a few more. We was able to see Trail, another producer. Trail, we was able to see yep, your partner. Yep. What's the name of that gyro spot that we went to? Or that was uh, Uncle Nick's. Uncle yeah. Nick's is a famous uh, little food spot in Rockford, man. That's, a, that's like a, uh, what do you call it? Everybody go there. You know what I'm saying? After the club. <laughs> yeah, so so we was able to go there. But I ain't going to say too much because I want y'all to watch the documentary. But y'all got to see the different people that was there. I was able to see the town. And I mean this from my right hand. This is a side bar. I have never tasted the best tacos in my life. I think it's Rockford. Is that where Mondo Yeah. Stay? No, Freeport. 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 Shout out to Freeport. The Amiguanos, the Amigas, the, the Oh yeah. Listen. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. I say, bro, anybody know me, I think I'm part Mexican, right? So if it's a Mexican woman that want me, baby, it's gonna be real easy. Your cousins, your daddy, and you know, all them gonna work for me and we gonna make it, we're gonna build an empire. This Mexican spot, I'm talking about I have been to Mexico. Literally. Street time. Bro, this spot in Freeport. I have never tasted this Mexican. They put they love. Like, I actually want to go back and ask the woman to cook. And if she's too old, I want to say, can I have your daughter? <laughs> this is amazing. For That was just a sidebar. Has nothing to do with the show. But I was able to go everywhere. But what I want y'all to do is go scream, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, go to TikTok. Yeah, YouTube. At YouTube, yeah. Antonius. Antonius Coates. Antonius Coates. Yep, What's the yep. website? TonyCoats.com. TonyCoats.com. So go to TonyCoats.com. Get prepared. If you grew up in the area, if you're new to it and true to it, make sure that you tap in. If you don't know your father and you want to know your father, if you want to forgive, listen to this interview over. You're talking about a man who is seasoned. We'll leave it at that. And was able to forgive. You're going to be able to see his mother. You're going to be able to see the man that he thought was his father, his stepfather who he knew wasn't his father, and his real father. And you're gonna be able to see all of these things. Do Yo, you wanna <laughs> that that was kind of crazy though? Cause you know, Johnny, my first dad, he lived in Mississippi, bro. And just so happens when we pull up to to that door, man, he was at that door. So let me hit bring y'all to speed. When we went to Chicago, Johnny now lives in the Mississippi, no longer lives in Illinois. Right. We had no inclination, no understanding. None. James didn't tell us, which is his brother. Nobody told us he was coming. At a specific time, we pulled up. James was going to the house. We was like, hey, take us back to the hotel. James like, I got to go to the house. James said, there go Johnny right there. Yeah, knocking on his door, bro. And he lives in Mississippi, and we in Illinois. And that's the first time I saw him since we had the <laughs> phone conversation last year after finding out all this information. Which means always God ordained. What you doing, what you supposed to do? Because Tony was telling me we going here. I'm like, bro, I got you. I'm going, bro. Like if he he know me for years, I ain't got to explain. Whenever this man called me, like bro, I got it. And the thing that he does is he don't understand his effect, right? Which is good because some people understand their effect and they abuse it. And they like, oh well, bro, treat me like I treat him, bro. We treat each other like real brothers. We treat each other with love and respect. Um, and and what what where he doesn't understand is he don't like the word fan. So I'm going to use a better word. I'm going to use godly used. When you're used by God, we just use that word. You can affect your little bro. You can affect your big bro. What he don't want is the glory, which is great because we're not supposed to take the glory. None of it. But he still got to know what the vessel has done. And sometimes for him, it might be better off for him not to know. Maybe he don't know, you know how many albums he sold. Because maybe he'd be more into, nigga, I sold this. Right. Maybe right. he don't need to know how much of effect he's had on us. If you got an effect on a real nigga like me, and I got to say this on the, bro, you're an important person. Nobody really has an effect on me. I don't care, bro. There was three people in my life that affected me. That's Mook, Slugger, and Tupac, bro. Those are big names to me. You dig what I'm saying? Other than that, I really don't care, bro. I really don't be like, oh, I want to be like him. I want to be, like, I wanted to be like my biological big brother. That was it in real life. Like other than that, I wasn't looking at no rapper, no entertainer, nobody in the streets. Like, oh, no, it wasn't that. But this man has an effect. I gotta add for Tony Coates helped change my life for the good, though. It's not no street stuff. This was for the good. But I go ahead, bro, because I know you got something. Man, it, it's funny that you brought up Tupac, though. <laughs> Cause I I've, I've been wanting to say this to a lot of people out there, man. You got you got some artists that believe you know they called by God, and that their job is to change the industry. You know, big up to you if you think if that's what God called you to do and called you to be. 
But I'm going to keep it all the way 100 with you. It wasn't the gospel rappers that was inspiring me. It was Tupac. Shed so many tears. It was it was the 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 songs that DMX did when he talked about God in his music. Those songs had more of an impact on me than worship music in the church did, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, with that being said, I had an opportunity to be around DMX. You know what I'm saying? Bless up. A, a lot of these a lot of these brothers, man, that we judge because of that, you know, there is toxic music being pumped into the into the world, bro. But you gotta realize one thing. It's been that way. Forever. And it, it's not going to change because that's a part of this world system. Let me take my perspective, and I want you to know, because I never said this to him. This is how I look at life. I look at life as a roadmap or a GPS. There's a river. At any given time on this river, you can choose to go left or right. At any given time on this river, you can, you can dock your boat and get off and go into the woods and do what you want. If you go God's way and you go on the river the way it goes, it's not going to go straight from A to B. It's going to go around from A to B. It's going to take turns, but you're going to stay on the river. You'll stay on the easy path. A righteous man's path, they say, is always easy. If it get hard, you got to ask yourself if you're righteous. You know what I'm saying? And then God told us not to separate the wheat from the terry. Why would he tell us that? The wheat and the terry look exactly alike. And he said, if you pull, if you pull up the terry, you might unroot the wheat. What is you know that? What explain saying? to those that don't know. The, you the, the, the wheat is God's children. The terry were planted there by the enemy and they look exactly like the wheat and their neighbors and their neighbors they're so they're so close to each other if you pull out the terry you can accidentally uproot the, the wheat. wheat and god told us not to separate the wheat from the terry but i feel that in in in, in jumping on these secular artists we doing that bro that you know is it, wrong i ain't gonna name no names that's a different podcast because we gotta wrap up but it's wrong to ask someone who is in the world to be a Christian and live by Christian standards where they don't come from Christian right, standards. Right. You right. can't ask no street nigga to live like this. Nah, because because to the natural man, spiritual things are foolishness. But if you're spiritual, you will be able to impact the natural man yeah, if yeah, you yeah. are who you say you are. He said don't do it in just in, in he said don't do it just in speech. I'm paraphrasing. Right, but in right. truth, indeed, indeed, yes, sir. The, the, the deed that I want to let y'all know me action. Right, not 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 the you going to hell approach. Not the not the you need to stop doing it the way like Jesus didn't even get out like that, bro. Even he didn't get out like that. not on top, coinciding with what you're saying. I ain't got to tell you nothing. I can give you a job. I know you robbing. You doing this, that, and the third. And I can come up like I got a job. That's right. deed. Right. That's more godly than me telling you that you shouldn't be doing this. Right. 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 If I'm not called to tell you that, you just I'm right. just telling you something that we all know. Right. But there's no impact and no effect on it. None, bro. But I come in and I give you a job. And now you're able to change your life. I give you an opportunity. Now you can say, "All right, all the rest of these preachers been telling me what I should do from the pulpit." Right. 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 But this man showed me what I should do. Right. And I think if you're a Christian, a believer, you should be showing the way. And I feel like for you, for me, for you is that's what it did. You showed me like, all right, bro, this is what I did. Boom, boom, boom. Right. But you lived it and you walked it out regardless of how you feel about yourself. Right, 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 right. So listen, man, the documentary is coming. We got to get up out of here. The first series is already dropped. Go to all the platforms, all the distro kids, whatever it is. I just want to live fire documentary my brother is meeting his father for the first time after mm -mm years you dig what i'm saying his biological father grew up with a man that he thought was his dad and wasn't but it's another caveat to this story oh yeah a huge caveat to this story and you could you can briefly say partially because you're not going to say everything because that's a whole nother episode but if you want to intrigue the people you can tell them something well here, here comes the intriguing there's a there's always a reason why it's always a method to the madness man it's a reason why you need to know who your family is man let's put it like that hey it is what it is it does what it does this is definitely the ugly truth my name is king edward this is not only my play upon this is my brother in the Lord. This is Tony Colts, aka yes, sir. Antonius. Yes, sir. Not just go follow him, go follow him and, and be led by him, man. 
Ain't gonna bless your life Go stream all the music man It's the ugly truth And we out of here Oh boy